was with God, the Word was God. Well, that word we physicists think was the quantum. In the beginning was the quantum principle. There was nothing. But the quantum principle says that even nothing is unstable. Well, if nothing is unstable, bubbles form. Tiny little bubbles form, which then begin to expand rapidly, and that's the Big Bang. Big Bangs happen all the time in an ocean of nothing. Can monkeys understand calculus? If you were to sit down with an ape and teach the ape from birth, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the derivative of f of x is equal to g of x, could you get an ape to understand calculus? The answer is no. Evolutionary speaking, the mind of an ape is genetically incapable of understanding higher mathematics and calculus. So what gives us the right to claim that we can understand the secret of the stars. Well, it just turned out that our brain is, in fact, smart enough. Even though we evolved from intelligent apes on a minor planet in a minor backwash of the known galaxy, we're still intelligent enough to understand the secret of the universe itself. My goal in life is to find an equation, an equation perhaps no more than one inch long, which will summarize everything we know about the physical universe. An equation one inch long, which eluded Einstein, which will allow us to understand where the Big Bang came from, where the galaxies and supernovas come from, where life comes from, where DNA comes from, where humans fit into this larger puzzle, maybe even eventually solving the puzzle of love itself. That's my goal, to be able to, quote, read the mind of God, unquote. We physicists are the only scientists who can say the word God and not blush. If you walk outside and you say the word God to most people, they think of a personal God. That's not the God that we physicists sometimes invoke. The way Einstein looked at it is that there really are two kinds of gods. There is the God of prayer, the personal God, the God of Isaac and Moses and Jacob. However, there's also the God of harmony, the God that says that there is a reason why things are the way they are. Why did it have to be so simple? Why should there be order rather than chaos? Why should there be an equation this long which will hopefully explain all physical reality? It didn't have to be that way. Some people ask me the question, are you physicists so narrow and so focused that when you see a beautiful painting and you see light shimmering on, on a pond, or you see a beautiful sunrise, do you see equations? And I confess, I do. It must be a strange world not being a scientist, going through life not knowing or maybe not caring about where the air came from and where the stars at night came from and how far they are away from us. I want to know. When I was a kid, I guess I could have become bitter because my parents, being Japanese-American immigrants, even though they were born in the United States, were kept in a concentration camp for four years, from 1942 to 1946. After they were let out of the concentration camps, they had no money. They had no way to see their dreams realized, except perhaps through their children. So I realized from a very early age that if something were to happen to me, I would have to do it myself. And so when I was in high school, I went to my mom one day and I said, Mom, I want to build an atom smasher. 
I want to build a 2.3 million electron volt Betatron in the garage. And my mom sort of just stared at me and said, sure, why not? I wanted to create antimatter in my backyard. I spent a lot of time at Stanford getting the blueprints, reading the theory behind atom smashers. The goal was to create a beam of energy, 2.3 million electron volts, sufficient to create a beam of antimatter, which I could then basically play with in, in the garage. Thinking back, I realized that when I was a child of eight, there was a moment of epiphany that changed everything around me. My elementary school teacher walked in the room one day, very somber, and announced to the whole class that Einstein had just died. That evening, every newspaper on the earth flashed a picture of his desk with the unfinished manuscript of his greatest unfinished work. I wanted to know what was in that book. It was like a detective story. I wanted to piece together who done it. I wanted to put together all the pieces. And as the years went by, I began to finally realize that Einstein was on the greatest chase of all time. I began to realize slowly over the years that what he was embarking on was the greatest scientific quest imaginable. Mm -hmm.